Safe house, what's going on? Look, I have a message for you today. And I want to start that message off by saying this. Our disobedience in God's promises in his word can have you wandering in places longer than God intended you to. I'm going to say that again. Our disobedience in God's word can have you wandering in places longer than God intended you to. Because some of you right now, you're in places of your life that God has brought you out of, that has been tormenting you and placing you in spiritual incarceration. And then there's others right now in your life, there's places that God is leading you to. Places in your life that God is leading you to that will provide you the freedom that you need from that spiritual imprisonment. But there's also another place that is in between both of those type of environments. And in this type of environment that is in, that, that is in the middle of both, this is an environment that a lot of us run from. Because inside of this environment, we have to unpack a lot of things about ourselves. And while we unpack a lot of things about ourselves, we're learning a lot of things about ourselves in the process. Because in this type of environment, we go through a lot of mental, emotional, and spiritual suffering so that God can form us into the person that he needs us to be. But a lot of times we find ourselves in this environment for way too long because of our disobedience to what God needs of us, which is faith and trust in the promises that he's made to us. And this place in this place that is in between both this place that is in between our place of imprisonment and our place of promise is an environment that we all know way too well, which is a place of wilderness. Yes, which is a place of wilderness. And I believe we find ourselves in this place of wilderness for two specific reasons. Two specific reasons. The first reason is because of punishment. It's because of punishment. And what do I mean by punishment? By being disobedient to God's word and what he needs of us. From being disobedient to the promises that he has set before us. Because you have to understand. You have to understand this. God disciplines those that he loves and he punishes those that he has set. If you don't receive any discipline or you don't receive any punishment from God, then that signifies that you're illegitimate. And I refuse to believe that you're an illegitimate child of God. Because if you're in a place of suffering, I mean, if you're in a place of wilderness right now, that is God trying to discipline you. That is God trying to discipline you because of the disobedience that you have shown him to the promises that he has placed before you. Yes. Then the second reason that I believe we find ourselves in a place of wilderness is because of preparation. God is trying to prepare us for the ministry that he has set before us. God is trying to prepare you for that future position that he's about to give you. God is trying to prepare you for that marriage that he's about to bless you with. God is about to prepare you for that financial increase that he's about to deposit inside of your bank account. God wants to prepare you. So those are the two reasons that I believe we find ourselves in a place of wilderness. And I want to be able to give you examples using text, of course, of what that actually looks like. And one of them is something that we all know very well. When you look at the people of Israel, right, and how God brought them out of Egypt, a place of imprisonment, a place of imprisonment. He brought them out of a place where they were suffering to take them to a land that he had promised them. A land flowing of milk and honey. And throughout that time, God is showing them his power. First, he showed them, hey, I can bring you out of a place of imprisonment. Then bringing them out of a place of imprisonment, they get to the Red Sea. Moses parts the Red Sea. That is another miracle that God is showing them. Look, I am showing you. I am showing you all of these things. So he brought them out of imprisonment. He destroyed, he destroyed their enemies in the Red Sea. And they was, their hearts were still hardened to the promises of God. And it was at this point that, it was at another point later on in the book of, uh, in the book of Numbers, Moses sent out 12 people to go check out the land. And out of those 12 people, you had two, which is Caleb and Joshua, that came back and gave an accurate report. But the other 10 decided to give a false report, leading a rebellion amongst the people. And I want to be able to read scripture so that you can vividly see what it looks like to go against God's promises. So I'm going to read through, I'm going to read through scripture. 
right? And this is this is this is the rebellion that the people had. And this comes from Numbers chapter 14, starting at verse 1. It says this. It said, then the whole community began weeping aloud and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness. Look, they're in the wilderness period, right? They complained. Why is the Lord taking us to a country only to have us die in battle? And I want to stop right here. They said, why is God? Why is God? Taking us to this country only to have us die in battle, not understanding that he just bought you out of a place of imprisonment and destroyed your enemies in the Red Sea. But you're asking, why is he why is he bringing us out of this, taking us into this just to die in battle? That's already showing disobedience to God's promises and the things that he's already done for you within your life. He's already brought you out of a place of hardship. He's already brought you out of a place of hardship and your hearts are so hardened. That it is blinding you from seeing what God has already done in your life and what he can do for you in your life. See, when Caleb and Joshua gave their report to them, he's telling them we can, we can overcome because they have faith. They have faith. They have faith at this point in what God, in what God is going to do and what God has already done. So as you further read, he said our, our wives, our little ones will be carried off and plundered. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? So they were at a return to the place where they were in prison that God bought them out of instead of just trusting that God will see you through whatever situation that you're facing, whatever obstacle, whatever challenge is set before you, God will see you through. He's already promised to do this. In the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, it says this. It said, the Lord will fight for you. All you need is to be still. The Lord is telling us that he wants to fight for us. Any battle that is too difficult for us, the Lord wants to fight for us. All we have to do is trust in him. Be still and put our trust in him. He's going to see us through whatever situation that we're facing in his life. So as we go on, then they plotted amongst themselves. Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Now they're ready to kick Moses out of the way. They're ready to, they're ready to kick him out of the way. They're ready to kick him out of the way because their hearts are so Pardon. So then it goes on. It said, then Moses and Aaron fell down to the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, Caleb's son, Caleb, tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It is rich. It is a rich land flowing of milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us because they know the power of God. They know that if God brought them out of a horrible situation, he's going to get them through another one. It is no way and no reason that God will bring you out of a out of a traumatizing situation and not see you through not see you through other situations in this life. No. He's telling them don't be afraid. But the whole community began talking about stoning, stoning them. They're talking about stoning these people. Because they lack faith in what God has already shown them that he will do for them. And so now it is through their disobedience that they find themselves in the wilderness even longer than God intended them to be as a form of punishment. And I want to read that to you. And this comes from chapter, it comes from Numbers chapter 14, verse 26. And then it says this, then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, how long must I put up with this wicked community and its complaints about me? They're complaining, to, they're complaining about God. They're complaining about God. Think of, think of how crazy it is. You find yourself in a position where you truly need someone, but you're complaining about them after they've already performed so many miracles for you to believe in them for. He said, yes, I've heard the complaints the Israelites are making against me. Now tell me this, as surely as I live and declares the Lord, I will do, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. You, you will all drop dead in this wilderness because you complained against me 
And every one of you who is 20 years old or older and was included in the registration will die. You will not enter or occupy the land I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb, will be Caleb and Joshua. You said your children will be carried off as plunder, and I will bring them safely into the land, and they will enjoy what you have despised. But as, as for you, you will drop dead in this wilderness, and your children will be like shepherds wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. In this way, they will pay for your faithless, faithfulness until the last of you lies dead in the wilderness. So at this point, other people will pay for your disobedience. And that's the thing that we fail to realize that you know, when we when we put ourselves in a position of being disobedient to God, we're not the only ones that has to suffer. It's other people that are connected to us right now that suffers because of our faithfulness, our our, our own our faithless faithful faithlessness. Right? They suffer because our because of our faithlessness, because of our disobedience, because of our lack of trust in God. Other people have to suffer for our mistakes. And so you don't want to put yourself in a position in your life where other people have to suffer because of the things that you've done in your life. That's, that's like being careless with finances. You're not the only person that has to suffer. Your children have to suffer after you as well. Now, they have debts that are added on to them because, because of your carelessness. We have to be mindful of these things because the things that we do in this life, it not only affects us, but it affects it affects everybody that is connected to us and everybody that we were entrusted to steward over. So we have to be mindful of these things. Then the text further on, it further says this, because your men explored the land for 40 days, you must wander in the wilderness for 40 years, a year for each suffer, a year for each day suffering the consequences. Then you will discover what it's like to be an enemy of God. And I, the Lord, has spoken, and I will certainly do the things that every member of the community has conspired against me, and they will be destroyed here in this wilderness. Don't let the place that God was trying to take you through become the place that you die in. I'm going to say that again. Don't let the place that God was trying to take you through, the place where he was trying to teach you a lesson in, be the place that you die in. They had to spend 40 years in that place and never see the promised land that God was trying to give to them. Do you know how crazy that is? This trip was supposed to take 11 days, but it took them 40 years. And they still never seen the promised land that God was trying to give to them. Could you imagine? Could you imagine in your life knowing that it was going to take you a day to get somewhere? But because... You wanted to be disobedient. You didn't want to trust the process. It took you, instead of a day, we're not going to be dressed. Say it took you 10 days afterwards to get there because you wanted to be, you wanted to be disobedient. That's like having a GPS trying to take you in the right direction. But you going off your own thoughts and your, your own cognitive say, well, I'm going to go this way. I'm not going to listen to the GPS. And then you end up getting lost. And it takes you longer to get to the destination that you were trying to get to because you failed to follow the GPS that was set before you. You don't want to be in a position of your life where God is trying to get you to a promised destination. And, it's, and it may be a quick route. And you fail to trust in him and you want to be disobedient to what he's trying to do and it takes you longer than that. No, God is trying to get you to a promised destination within your life. All you need to do is trust in what he's doing throughout the process because he's already, he's already shown you his power. He's already shown you this. He's already shown you these things in your life. And this is what it looks like to be in the wilderness because of, because because of your disobedience as a form of punishment. When you look at the book of Jonah, Jonah was in the same position, being in the belly of the fish for three days because of his disobedience to God. God told him to go to the city of Nineveh, but he decided to go in the opposite direction. So God sent a storm that they near killed everybody that was around him. Remember, your disobedience to God not only affects you, but it affects everybody else that is around you, everybody else that is connected to you. And it's because of Jonah's disobedience that other people was about to suffer. And then Jonah found himself in a place of wilderness within, a, within the belly of the fish. 
He found himself in a, in a place of wilderness inside the belly of the fish. I don't know if this is helping somebody. But it was through that disobedience in God's word that they found themselves in even more difficult situations in their lives. You look at the, like the Israelites, like Jonah, they, they decided to be disobedient to God's word and found themselves in an even more difficult position within their life because they failed to listen to what he was telling them. God instructs you. He instructs you, he instructs you on what to do. He reveals to you how to do these things. All you have to do is be mindful and listen to what he is telling you. Your wisdom is not greater than God's wisdom. It is a difference between the spirit of this world and the spirit of God. The spirit of this world will deceive you and think that you can do things on your own. But the spirit of God will show you that you can't do these things without me. And the spirit of God will take you places in this life. The spirit of this world will never can can never get you to. You always have to remember that Jonah spent three days in the belly of the fish only to learn what God needed him to learn, to come out and then do and obey what God needed of him. Not understanding if you would have did it in the first place, you wouldn't have to go through all, you wouldn't have to go through that difficult situation. You wouldn't have to go through that period of wilderness in that way. Because we're all going to find ourselves in a position of wilderness, but it all depends on how you get there. Because it doesn't matter. I want you to understand this. It doesn't matter matter how you get in that position of, you know, a position of being in the, uh, a, a season of the wilderness, because it's all going to end the same way. And it's in God's will happening. So we know how we can find ourselves in a place of wilderness because of punishment. But I want you to know that is not the only that is not the only way that you can find yourself in a position of wilderness. You could also find yourself in a position of wilderness as a form of preparation. And we've seen this when Jesus was um, when Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. But what you don't realize, Jesus is being led here. This is the this is the very beginning of his ministry. God is preparing him for the ministry that he's about to conduct here on this earth. God is about to prepare him for the most important task that he's ever had in his life. It wasn't as a form of punishment. No, it was as a form of preparation. God was preparing Jesus for what was to come. And in that moment of preparation, he went through three different accounts of being tempted by Satan. And on each one of those accounts, he used the word of God as a form of protection from the deception that Satan tried to use against him. And that is the same thing that we have to do within our lives as well. See, God may be taking you through a period of wilderness as a form of preparation. Like I said in the beginning, God is preparing you for that new position that you're about to get into. God is preparing you for that new relationship that you're about to get into, that marriage that you're about to walk into. He's about to prepare you for a financial increase inside of the, with, with deposits inside of your bank accounts, checks in your mailbox. He's about to prepare you for moments of prosperity. But you have to be willing to go through those moments of wilderness. This is very important. Because you have to be able to unpack certain things that you packed inside of yourself that God never needed inside of you. You have to be willing to unlearn things that was taught to you because of the circumstances and the environments that you were faced with. It is time for you to see your true selves. You have to see who you really are, because that's when your blessings come, when you're operating within your true self, not somebody that you you you're, you're pretending to be, not somebody that you're imitating. No, God is going to bless who you actually are in this life. All of us are created differently and we have to begin operating within our true selves. We have to begin operating as the people that God intended us to be. Because I guarantee you, the person that you went in as, the person that you were as you entered the, the wilderness is not the person that you're going to be, not the person that you're going to be when you come out of it. You're going to be two different people. God is truly trying to bless you in these moments of your life. He is. But you have to decide how you're going to enter that season of wilderness. Are you going to enter it because you were disobedient to his word? 
Are you going to enter it because you are obedient to his word and you God is going to God is about to prepare you for something that is going to bless you in the next season of your life? See, I've been through those situations in my life more time than I would like to say. And a lot of the times that I was in a position of wilderness was because of punishment, was because of disobedience to what God was trying to do within my life and what God needed to needed me to do within my life. Yeah, I was disobedient to a lot of things because I wanted to do things the way that I, I wanted to do them, not the way God needed me to do them, but the way that I wanted to do them. And so we have to, you have to make a decision for yourself. Do you want to find yourself in the same position that the Israelites did? Having to wander around for so many years of their lives when it was only so, 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 supposed to take them 11 days to get to where they were supposed to be going. But through their disobedience, had them wandering around for 40 years. You have to make a decision. Is that the life that you want? Do you want to put yourself in a position of going back to your place of imprisonment or walking to the promised destination that God has for you? You have to ask yourself, do you want to go in this period of wilderness as a form of preparation for what God is about to do in your life? And if that's something, if, if that's something that you want to do, put, the, put it in the comment box. Put it in the comment box and I'm going to pray for everybody in there. Because I want you to fully embrace what God is doing in your life. Don't put yourself in a position where you're in a, a season of your life. And you're in that season of your life longer than God intended you to. Because God is not going to put you in a position that you're not ready for. He's not going to put you in a position that you're not ready for. He's not. He's not. It's not going to do you like that. He's going to prepare you. And however long it takes to prepare you for that position, that's how long, that's how long it's going to be. But I just want you to be mindful of that. All right? I love y'all safe house.